Hello, everyone. Hi, it's uh, Ed Pence here, and uh, I uh, am happy to be um, uh, moderating this uh, moderating this next uh, next uh, session. So, just a, qu a quick a uh, couple of quick reminders. We've got uh, the code of conduct uh, down at the bottom, and also uh, there's the ask a question function. So, as we go through this, uh, feel please feel free to uh, to ask any questions uh, there. Uh, but uh, I think we're ready, ready to get going now. And uh, so I will hand over to uh, to Jim Myers, who uh, will be giving us uh, 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 an update on uh, uh, dropping PIDs into web applications. So I will get myself off the screen here and uh, pass over to you, uh, Jim. Uh, let me. Oh, I turned off the wrong video, sorry. Yep. <laughs> there you are, back again, and then we will get you up with your yep. slides and great, You're all set, thanks. thanks. Okay, um, thanks, uh, good morning or good afternoon or good evening, uh, wherever you are. Um, if you uh, tried to look me up on the web, you may know that uh, um, I'm Jim Myers and I'm a uh, professor who studies purple potatoes up in Oregon and that I uh, used to moonlight in professional wrestling as George the Animal Steel and that I sometimes dabble in cardiology research. Um, and if you're still awake in Pitapalooza after this many hours, you'll realize that may have given me a, a little bit of a personal interest in PIDs um, to, to sort of distinguish who I actually am. A um, little bit more seriously, um, I'm, I'm working here and presenting with my, my uh, colleagues here from the Qualitative Data Repository, which is a curated data repository um, in the social sciences that uh, takes multimedia inputs and uh, helps in that research area. Uh, we leverage Dataverse, which is open source software that's uh, uh, very rich functionality, still on its uh, exponential growth phase, up to 60 plus organizations around the world, including um, institutions that are really fronts for multiple universities behind them. And the, the reason that, that we looked into the, the thing that I'm talking about today is that uh, both QDR and the larger community here are very interested in PIDs of, of all varieties, uh, as well as controlled vocabularies more generally. But um, there's really fairly limited um, support for them in, in Dataverse at the moment. And it, it's a common problem. It's not just Dataverse, that there are multiple APIs. Um, there are per PID implementation details. What metadata can you get? What is the best practice for displaying them? Um, how do you get people to input them? There's expertise required kind of in the, the PID itself in doing the API calls and inside the, the software that you're working with, such as Dataverse. Um, so it, it takes somebody who's got some very broad knowledge to be able to put this together. And then there are all sorts of maintenance and usability concerns. What if these PIDs go down? What if they don't take on and we've spent all this time to do it? So a lot of things that make this a, a sort of a thing where you, you limit and delay and we get into the mode of, of sort of looking at different repositories and seeing the checklist of do they support X or Y because it's really hard. And so if they're, you know, there's only a few that, that may support the kinds of PIDs we want. So what we'd really like to do is get out of that. And so I have a couple of trick questions for you. And again, if you if you want to pick the uh, the answer that's uh, uh, you know the the wrong answer here, uh, please put in chat or or Slack um, your, your good reason for picking the, the the things that I'm I'm setting up to knock down here. So um, which would you rather do? Um, would you rather type an orchid you memorized because you want to show you know that that you've got a good memory and that you're a pit enthusiast? Um, and would you also like to do it after you've typed in for an orchid, for example, your name, your email, and affiliation, and then put in your orchid, which your profile has all those things in? It. Or um, I got to get back in my application here. Or would you actually like to do something like see what your colleagues, uh, you know, the, the orchids you've already put in, which colleagues those are, and then with a little video here, watch the screen. Should I just be able to type a name, um, add in the new person? And I'm typing uh, Nick Weber, my colleague, uh, on the talk here, um, and there he is. Um, would you like to do that instead? 
And then when you see these things displayed, do you want to proudly see all of those orchids so that everybody knows that uh, you know you're good guys who've actually gone and created your your orchid IDs, um, or would you rather just see your co-authors and be able to hover over and see emails? Um, would you like to have those be live links out to your to your uh, orchid page and so on? Um, and so now, not a trick question. Um, if you've seen another repository that doesn't do the second one and just gives you a nice type in and shows you your ORCID ID, how long do you think it would take to, um, to, to be able to implement this? Um, so after what we've done uh, in, that I'll, I'll tell you about next, the answer is basically minutes. Um, if you've got a repository that does that type in, you can drop in an open source JavaScript. Um, you can do a, a slight amount of work to basically tell the JavaScript where your input and outputs are on the page, um, potentially do some CSS styling um, so that the fonts and things match, um, and, then, and then you're all set and ready to go. Um, and I, I see some things in the chat I'll, I'll try and answer as we go along here. Um, so the, the point here is, is A, it's a lot faster than, than you think, um, but it's also something that, you know, the, the future is potentially going to look like this, where you don't just look at one thing, um, but you have to memorize all of these, or you have to wait for your favorite repository to implement all of these. So really speeding this up is, is important. Um, so here's the approach. Um, the, the idea is that an application can basically treat the, the PID field as plain text. That, that's often the way people start anyway, right? You just, you put a type in, you store it in the database as text and you show it back on the screen as text. And then you can have a generic JavaScript that really knows nothing about the application. All it knows is basically that it can find these things on the web page for that application, for that repository, for that tool, whatever, whatever your tool is. And it does simple things like it finds the input field and hides it. Um, it shows instead an autocomplete selection list where you can start typing in and find things. Um, and every time you make a selection out of the list, it updates the hidden input field. Um, so when somebody hits the save button, your application thinks that somebody typed into that input field and it has the same text it would have before. The same thing on the output side, whenever you display that field, um, because the JavaScript knows where to find it, it basically just replaces that field with HTML that shows the name as a link to your page with your email or whatever else you want to do. And then the, the JavaScript can basically the things it writes on the page, it can expose themselves to CSS styling. So if you want to match the color and the size and the font and everything so it fits into your application, you're, you're good to go. And again, the, the point again is that the application doesn't know that anything changed. The JavaScript doesn't know anything about your application. Um, I, I skipped by here that this JavaScript, you know, it, it takes some time and expertise to do. This one's a fairly simple one that, that I, I'll tell, say in a minute about a lot more things that we can do, but it, it's only about 230 lines, so it's really not that huge. And even this one, um, part of the, uh, I, I see people talking about, well, there are lots and lots of uh, uh, different names for the same person in ORCID and so on. Um, one of the things this does is actually the first time that you find somebody, once you've found them, uh, this JavaScript is storing that information in your local browser. Um, so the second time, if you type Amit Kumar um, or Nick Weber, um, you'll notice Nick Weber was right at the top. That's because I've typed him before. So it's actually prioritizing within the search results the ones that I've used in the past. Um, so between, between that sort of thing and um, things I'll talk about in a second that we can make this more uh, more sophisticated. I think we can handle the, the problems of there being multiple names for things uh, or different people with the same name. Um, so the benefits here really, you know, this configuration is fast and it really doesn't require PID specific expertise. It doesn't require you to know how to do Ajax web calls in JavaScript because somebody's already done that for you. Um, the JavaScript now sort of on the social side you know, it's it's useful technology, but this is also something that can be supported across applications. So rather than each application having to maintain its own JavaScript, we can now share that maintenance burden, um, share the, the burden of, of adding new features to it. And potentially this could be communities or it could be multiple, you know, the, the PID providers themselves could add this in addition to their APIs, what they, what they send out. Um, it's certainly easier for users. Um, and, and it starts to get towards the, the point of, 
you know, we, we all like PIDs, but PIDs are for machines. And so, you you know, the more you hide a PID, but make the value apparent by making those things be automatic links for people, I think we, we push the value of PIDs themselves for, for people. Um, this is also something that, you know, if the, the JavaScript or the, the PID provider goes away, what your data application has is the same thing it would have had in the, in the beginning. It has the manual text and entry fields in it, and it has the PIDs in its, uh, in its database. Um, so it's got sort of a, a reasonable fallback. Uh, you know, if everything goes south, you haven't, um, you haven't changed your application so that you have to undo changes in your application to get rid of it. Um, you, you, right, you're sort of, sort of lighter weight integration. Um, so going further, you know, there's lots of things that that I think could be added within this paradigm that I'm I'm pretty sure would work just by adding to the JavaScript. And then the, the next page, I want to see a couple things about um, additions that I'm not so sure fit without without uh, a little bit more sophistication. But you know, there's no reason here that you can't do advanced searches where if you can't find the person, um, there's a button on the side that clicks out and opens up a big pop up that lets you go search. You know, for example, with ORCID, by you know, what's their institution? What's a what's a DOI that they've put in as well into their profiles, so that you can start to do some refinement. Um, you know, that kind of pop out could be could be uh, PID specific and could help to disambiguate. Um, the displays could certainly be richer. You know, everybody here is showing the little ORCID ID in front. I didn't put that in the JavaScript, but you could put ORCID in front of the name so that people know that, that it's there. You could put a click to copy so that the ORCID gets copied when you when you uh, hover over it. Um, you can change the formatting options like down at the bottom I mentioned, you know, wh why isn't the DOI showing up as a full citation block? Um, could the JavaScript let you choose between a one line and a you know multi-line uh, choice for display? Um, I mentioned already a little bit of pre-population and prioritizing, but you know if you've seen some of the the PID graph um, uh, uh, presentations here earlier in Pitapalooza, um, you know could I prioritize anybody who's connected to me by that graph so that again like I was prioritizing people you've used before, if that graph could could help to disambiguate because it's your it knows that the the Amit Kumar you're talking about is the one you've co-authored with or is from your institution, right? It can guess that those should be at the top of the list for you. Um, this is also again not not specific to uh, to any particular PID. Um, and one of the things I wanted to mention is that my, my colleagues in the Netherlands uh, at Dons who uh, use uh, Dataverse um, are, are trying to work now with SCOSMOS, which is a, a basically a service for uh, publishing and, and serving vocabularies and ontologies that, that uh, have SCOS information in them. Um, basically, it's one API that handles multiple vocabularies. So again, if you if you implement that, you've actually implemented uh, many vocabularies at once. And both ORCID and SCOS uh, do some fun things with related searches. I, I didn't say it in going through the beginning here, but with ORCID, um, if you actually typed Nick Washington uh, in that first box there, it would have found Nick Weber because Nick Weber is at the University of Washington. So you can actually type Nick Washington, Weber, whatever. And so th the more metadata you have, the search that ORCID has now, which is really, right, it's really cool that it, it, it uses the metadata to actually let you do a Google-like search across all that metadata. So I think, you, again, you've got another way to disambiguate. Um, SCOS kind of goes in the other direction. If you st start typing a term, um, it'll actually show you terms that you know are, are not the same letters at all, but are narrower and broader uh, implementations of the same thing. So again, you can do a lot of things uh, to, to broaden what you get back. Um, the last little thing on this page is just pointing out that um, you know for things like authors, the order is important, as we all know. Um, adding support for keeping the order in the in the application can be hard, but if the application just keeps a comma separated uh, list of ORCIDs, JavaScript can do fun things like on the top here. So I'll, I'll just click again that the, the uh, whoop, I gotta go back up and uh, click the button to make my video play here. J just basically showing the JavaScript can do things like let you drag and drop around. And again, the application thinks it's got one single list that it's storing in the database. It doesn't know anything about reordering, um, no functions to reorder at the, at, the, at the application level, just doing that in the front end JavaScript. Um, all right, so truth and advertising. Um, 
that there's one thing I didn't tell you about with Dataverse. Um, it's an enterprise Java Beans application. It actually is is smart enough to know um, there's there are things that it does where instead of replacing the entire page, it it does an AJAX call and replaces part of the page. Um, we actually have to call the JavaScript again after that because when you replace the thing on the page, it goes back to to, to the original showing the ORCID and, the, and we have to run the JavaScript once more. Um, same thing we have to do with every other JavaScript though. Um, metadata caching and archiving, we've had discussions in Dataverse about wanting to um, keep the metadata as well. So it's nice to have the user um, see, you know, the name and email and affiliation and things from the ORCID, but we, we're going to archive uh, this information where we're, we create uh, archival bags uh, out the back of Dataverse. Um, we'd like to have that information in. So I think we're, we're still going to end up having to call the API directly to get that. Um, potentially we can do that with some interaction with the JavaScript. But you know, again, I think there are still richer integrations you can do that will require more than this JavaScript. But, but I think the JavaScript is still uh, you know, a nice start and, and potentially makes doing those other things simpler. Um, there are some other funky cases that, you know, it would be nice to have either ORCID and free text. Um, it would, or to have, uh, for example, for like keywords to have uh, multiple vocabularies allowed in as a keyword types. So I think JavaScripts can be extended to, to be able to handle that if you wanted to set up more than one. Um, in the alternate direction, uh, sometimes people have asked in Dataverse to be able to want to filter things. So there's a s bunch of subject keywords, but if your repository only supports certain subjects, you'd like to have a subset of the vocabulary be allowed as choices. Or you're associated with funders or research organizations in a certain area or given sub uh, given country, so you'd like to cut down on the on the on the uh, choices that show up in the list, and again, I think these are things you can probably get in a generic way, but but uh, uh, more work to be done. All right. So, uh, in conclusion, um, you know, really, I want to encourage uh, you know people to to uh, use PIDs by making it a lot easier and, and sort of get rid of the bar that you have to ask. You know, is this something that that my particular repository I want to use, does it support my favorite PID? We should be able to support all of them really easily. So let's let's use this kind of approach to make it easier for users and easier for developers to get there. Um, tell your PID providers or your colleagues at other repositories that you want more than an API. Um, let, let's go forward and, and uh, work to, to build these. Um, QDR and the Dataverse community are certainly interested in this, and I'm, I'm hoping that we're going to uh, go forward and do this at least for ORCID and SCOSMOS, potentially other ones. Um, but we'd be very happy to collaborate. Um, we'll certainly share as we go forward. Um, it, be happy to hand these JavaScripts off to, to somebody if they want to maintain them, that sort of thing. Um, and, and again, I, I think this is something that you can certainly do for different PID types and, and controlled vocabulary services. So, you know, the collection of these will probably be stronger than one or two of them sitting in different places. So aggregating them together in a, in a GitHub repository or something might be helpful. Um, the, uh, the, I see questions in here that, that uh, basically where's the software. Um, I don't have it as, a, I can give you the URL where it's sitting in the GitHub repository. I haven't completely pulled it out as a separate thing yet and, and provided documentation and so on. Um, certainly I'm interested in doing that. And again, if, if people are interested, you know, say something here in chat or say something in, uh, um, in Slack, you know, that the more people who are interested, the more there's motivation to actually get this out and, and uh, to, to do the little bits of cleanup on it. Um, so with that, thanks for listening. Um, be happy to take more comments and questions. Um, and, and again, I'll just note that uh, as I was getting started and was looking at the, the beginning of Pitapalooza here, uh, I saw this uh, quote from a blog ent entry you know, saying that, that PIDs are often, as they should be, largely invisible to users. And then I, I watch and see everything is actually, we're showing the PIDs to users. They're, they're not really invisible in that sense. Um, their value is often invisible because it's either machine to machine or, you know, it's nicely hidden in behind the name. So it's just links that, that work seamlessly like they should, but let's hide the PID themselves a little bit more. All right. So thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Jim. We did have uh, one one question here in addition to the one about the J JavaScript, and that is just uh, this kind of functionality seems fine in the hands of information professionals who will do due diligence to check they have the right IDs. How do you prevent regular users assigning the wrong or gets to the wrong outputs? Um, 
I'm not sure of the direction of the of the question. So let me let me answer maybe what's not the question first. I think one of the things that that I'm concerned about almost in the opposite direction is we have people putting a name. Uh, you know, the alternate is often put in a name, uh, put in an affiliation, and then give an orchid. And we often don't have any check that that orchid actually goes with that name or the affiliation. And so we, we're mm -hmm. potentially showing the wrong name sort of the way we're doing things now. The, the nice thing about the approach I'm talking about is since since you're using the name to get to the orchid, you're fairly sure that it's the same, right? At least the name is, is associated with the orchid. Um, if if you're talking about the more of the, the aliasing and the, the fact that there are multiple people with the same name and so on, um, I think the the more metadata we show about that person, the more likely you'll be able to find out that if it's wrong, the more we do to um, use the the PID graph behind it to say, you know, gosh, this this guy is someone that you've never co-authored with, you've never cited before. Are, are you sure? Right? I think we can build those kinds of things in to do some automation of the due diligence as well. But again, I think there's, you know, the, the there's no perfect answer, but I think there's ways that you could think about this approach actually helping rather than being something that makes this harder. Great, thanks. Uh, any any other uh, questions or or comments? We can certainly uh, continue the discussion over on uh, over on uh, Slack. There is a a, a follow up uh, discussion channel there. Uh, yeah, I, I see one more question in there. If we have. Do we have time oh, for yeah. it? Oh, definitely, yeah. Uh, just uh, uh, Thomas Jun Juno is asked, is, is it planned to have the ORCID profile filled uh, by Dataverse? So th there's there's two ways with ORCID that you can connect. One is when you're actually using ORCID to, um, to uh, right, the person is signing in through ORCID so that you know that you're interacting with that person and you actually have their credentials so that you could, for example, when, uh, when when they publish data through Dataverse, actually go push their information back to their profile. Um, I, I think that that's that's possible um, in Dataverse, and I think it's been discussed. I don't know of any particular plans to to do that in the short term. The thing we're doing here, though, is really on the public side. It's like for your co-authors, so we we have no. Um, you know, we only know the public information about your co-authors and we're just writing down their work and we have no access to the co-authors profiles, that, that sort of thing. Um, but but in terms of profile stuff, I, I would put the pitch out for, um, you know, let's think about this more as a viral um, mechanism as well. Why not when somebody, when you, uh, when you have to put in your co-authors information, if they don't have an ORCID profile, you type in their name and their email and affiliation, and there's a button that says, would you like us to tell your, your uh, coworker to sign up for ORCID so that you don't have to type this again next time? All right, so we, we can't even think about getting ORCID profiles created by, by uh, kind of triggering that sort of thing. Yeah, I, I, I think I think that's a, a great, uh, great, great suggestion. There's there's a lot that can be done there, uh, and and I see that uh, there's also in 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 the chat, um, uh, Tom from uh, Orchid is saying he, here's our recommended co-author co-author workflow, and there it is. <laughs> so uh, great, uh, that's great. that's that's really useful. Great. Well, thank you very much. That 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 was really excellent and uh, perfect timing because we can just then have a a, a few minutes uh, break for changeover before the uh, before the next session. But uh, thank thank thanks very much, Jim. And uh, uh, yeah, we'll have a, a quick few minutes break uh, before we uh, start with the next uh, session on the half hour. Thanks a lot. Great. Thanks.